What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about fluid compartments and how they react to changes in osmolarity. So starting off, uh, let's start with the basics, which is a case where we have isotonic fluid loss. When I say isotonic, I mean, uh, I mean that we're going to lose about an equal amount of water and, let's say in this case, salt. An example of this would be in the case of diarrhea, vomiting, or hemorrhage, in which you're losing both amounts of solutes and water. So the way I tackle these is that I look at osmolarity first. If there's no change in osmolarity, then I'm just going to move on to the second step, which is to look at ECF and see what changes here. If osmolarity, however, does change, either increase or decrease, I will expect to see a change in not only ECF, but also ICF. So if there's no changing osmolarity, we'll leave ICF alone. So in the case of isotonic fluid loss, we don't have a change in osmolarity because we have lost water and solutes at about an equal amount. So this remains the same, meaning I will completely ignore ICF in this case and only focus on ECF. The extracellular compartment in this case since we're losing fluid, will decrease, and that is it. Now, as expected, if we gain isotonic fluid, it will be the same case. Osmolarity will stay the same, that's my step one. My step two is to look at ECF. ECF here will increase because we have added fluid that is isotonic no change in osmolarity. So in the case of losing hypotonic fluid, meaning I'm losing mostly water, um, examples of this would be losing it in the urine in diabetes mellitus or in diabetes insipidus. Um, it could be due to dehydration. In this case, since we are losing more water in the urine, the osmolarity in our blood will actually go up. because it's, we've lost more water. We've got more salt or solutes in our blood now. Since we have lost water, that means that my ECF compartment is going to come down. And in this case in particular, since there was a change in osmolarity, the ECF is going to have lost water, but it needs more water to balance out all of this extra salt. So it's going to attempt to pull water from the next compartment, which is the ICF. So ICF will now go down. So to review, my step one was to look at osmolarity. I'm losing more water than salt. My osmolarity in the blood will go up. I have more salt in the blood. The ECF compartment will go down because I've lost water. And because there's so much salt and so little water, I'm going to try and pull out of the ICF some water to balance the extracellular fluid out and try it to attempt to make it isotonic, meaning I will lose fluid from the ICF. Okay, now let's practice a similar one, but with gain of hypotonic fluid. So I'm gaining water. So it could be something as simple as just drinking too much water or giving a hypotonic saline. Okay, so step one, we're going to be looking at osmolarity. Now my osmolarity here will have to be low because I'm giving so much water that it's diluting all of that salt, right? So I'm going to go ahead and draw this lower. And the next step would be to look at, at ECF. So the ECF here, since I'm gaining water, is actually going to come right out here. I have a lot of water. And since I have so much water and so little salt, the ECF is going to attempt to try and give some of that extra water to the next compartment, the ICF. So the ICF will actually increase as well. Okay, it's looking a lot easier now, huh? Let's move on to the last two. 
So in the case where we're losing hypertonic fluid, um, meaning that we're losing more salt than water, what we would have is a change in osmolarity in which since we're losing salt, our blood levels of salt are going to be low. So since I'm losing so much salt, there will be little salt in my blood and more water. Now the ECF wants to, become, to make this as isotonic as possible, so it's going to actually come down by giving some of this water to the ICF. So the ICF will actually increase. So we're shifting the volume from the ECF to ICF. Why? We lost salt. There's so little salt, so much water. The ECF wants to make this as isotonic as possible, so it's going to give away some of that excess water to the ICF compartment. Now this would be the case in adrenal insufficiency. So last but not least, we've got gain of mostly salt. And this would be, um, for example, due to SIADH. So what's going to happen is our osmolarity, since we're gaining salt, is automatically going to increase. Because we have so much salt now in our blood, our ECF is going to need more water, right? So what it's going to do is, it's going to achieve getting all of that water, but at the cost of pulling it from the ICF. So the ICF will decrease because it gave water to the ECF so that the ECF can kind of balance out all of that excess salt. So I hope all of this made sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you have anything else you would like me to go over, um, I'd, I'll do my best to make it simplified and short. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Good luck studying. Bye.